Well, another issue grabbing headlines recently has been heated debate between Charlotte Mecklenburg schools and the idea of charter schools for towns in our area. First, the town of Matthews asked the state to allow for a charter school rather than using just CMS. Then other towns jumped in. CMS responded that it may now put new construction on hold in those towns. That fight continues, but in the midst of all this heat, we found a remarkable partnership between a CMS school and a newer charter school serving the exact same neighborhood. You may not have heard about it, but it's going so well the two schools may serve as an example for the state and even nationally. Carolina Impact's Tanisha Johnson shows us how it works. The battle over choice ignited a flurry of headlines and tweets after Matthews, Mint Hill, Cornelius and Huntersville got the go-ahead to open up their own schools. But in the middle of it all, an exceptional partnership took place. A CMS school, Ashley Park, and a charter movement school, both on Charlotte's west side and both drawing students from the same neighborhood, teamed up. And so it's been a really beautiful data point to say, whoa, I mean, we're already doing so many things differently and better. We really just look at if they're not going to our school, they're going to your school, and we want them to be served well regardless. And that kind of just took our walls down and said, okay, we're here for our community. Kaysen's ready to learn. Kamani's ready to learn. Ooh, Jameer is ready to learn. And everyone is learning a lot. The partnership is the first of its kind in the Charlotte area giving parents and staff the ability to help all of their kids dream, plan, and create a new pathway for success. Here, teachers assist parents, and parents work with their kids, creating goals for the school year. I also just feel like when I shifted my lens to recognizing that this was about loving kids and supporting kids everywhere and not just exclusively the kids that walk through my doors, that became a reason to me that I would collaborate with anyone, let alone a school that's also, you know, a quarter mile away. Eyes on me, eyes on me. I want to shout out some of my amazing rock stars during that last set of rotation. It's a partnership that surprised everyone. So at both schools, parents are given tips on how to help their child. Teachers are sharing ideas and resources at monthly family nights, which empower and engage parents and children. There's transportation and food for those nights. And they're sharing what's happening in their classrooms and learning of ways to support students. We're able to completely bounce ideas off one another, say what worked well, what we want to make better, and learn from each other's schools, not just our own experiences. Sumter says working together was out of the box because there wasn't a blueprint to follow and they didn't know what to expect. I think especially in Charlotte and in North Carolina, it is a risk just because that hasn't been done, so there's not a lot of successful stories around to measure it by. Because we're working as a team to be our very best. But now moving through the second year, it's paying off big time, and their focus on communication on every level with teachers, parents, and students is key. We read all about our Make Way for Ducklings. Now this story is super special. So normally it might be that a family walks in, says, good morning, Ms. Loftus, I say good morning back. What I notice is as families are engaging in these events in this process, the parent and I are having a longer, deeper, more helpful conversation because what I'm noticing is they just feel more comfortable to do that. And that feeling of comfort is an indication of important changes here. With better communication, more parents are taking an interest and getting involved, and grades are improving too. We're earning scholar dollars if you are walking in Hall at a voice level zero. It's rare that you find two schools, both public and charter, in the same community working together, at least here in Charlotte. But when Ashley Park and Movement School got over their fears of losing students to one another and connected, that's when they saw their enrollment increase. We got new projections in the spring. And so what we're finding is our enrollment is actually above projection for the first time in three to four years, which is really exciting. So parents who have choices between these two schools are choosing to stay put. Monica Hamlin, an Ashley Park parent, planned to move her daughter last year. They told me, don't do it. Let her stay here and we promise you, we're gonna show you that we're gonna improve with helping her better herself. So I allowed her to stay here and I've been happy. Now she and other parents like Amber Dunn believe it's a new day at both schools and it can only get better. And then there are endless possibilities for them to work together. Both principals feel pretty excited about how far they've come together. Everyone say, I'm a reader. I'm a reader. Yeah, you are. 
far. We've only reaped tremendous benefit, as in our kids have only reaped tremendous benefit since we made that like bold choice. So I'm just really pleasantly surprised at how this has, you know, grown into a year two and hopefully a year three beyond that. The partnership of Ashley Park and Movement School may be a first for North Carolina, but perhaps not the last. These two schools have shown that instead of building walls, it's better to build bridges that benefit everyone, especially the kids in the classroom. For Carolina Impact, I'm Tanisha Johnson reporting. Thanks so much, Tanisha. Joining me now is Greg Schirmbeck, founder and education consultant, and is working with these two schools in this exciting collaboration. Help us understand, Greg, a little bit just how unique this is. Yeah, so we think it's really unique. Um, very rarely across the country do charters and districts work together in a way to best support the students and the families they're serving. Um, even more so, it's uh, even more rare in Charlotte, really rare in, in North Carolina, and incredibly rare across the Southeast. And so we think creating this formal partnership between these two schools, um, creating a formal schedule and a comprehensive plan that these two schools are working together to support families and, and students, um, you know, we think is really rare across the country. So you're the project manager really for these parent nights. And the mere fact of having food we saw in the story and transportation uh, eliminates some of the barriers for parents to get involved in their children's education. Have you seen the response grow? Yeah, 100%. You know, we really think these and know these are more than just kind of what we're calling family nights. Um, and so from the outside, it may seem as if you know, doing dinner and doing transportation and some of those things, which are important and great, uh, but there's so much more. And each night is driven by um, feedback from families, as well as in collaboration with data from the schools as well. And so they're able to use these nights to offer real resources for families um, that's relevant to them in raising children, um, as well as collecting feedback from families about how the school can best support their families. And then of course, academic resources and remediation uh, for the scholars and well. And so all three of those things are happening every night and we're being incredibly data-driven about um, the outcomes that are coming um, from those nights. Uh, and what we've seen have been a remarkable output. And so we're close to averaging between 20, 30, 40% of families showing up every night on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, not only to eat dinner, not only to build community and trust with their school, um, but also to gain and share resources to best support the scholars or the students at these schools. Um, and so that feedback and, and that attendance and that engagement from families has been really remarkable. And so this is not part of the regular uh, expense of educating a child. So in charter schools and public schools, the state pays the school a per pupil rate to educate those students. This that's is correct. outside of that, so how do you pay for this? Yeah, that's correct. We've been um, incredibly fortunate to work with the Wells Fargo Foundation here in Charlotte. Wells Fargo, has, as many of us know, um, is really a champion for public education and supporting the improvement of public education. Um, and so at their foundation, you know, Jay Everett, Christy Thomas, Rod Banks have been incredible supporters. Um, they've been solely responsible for supporting the resources of this work. Um, and really understand how innovative this work is. And quite, you know, frankly, it is quite rare to have this a charter district partnership um, and to have a foundation and to have a community resource understand and be willing to support uh, an innovative project like this, you know, is, is really remarkable and the philanthropic support is incredible. As an education consultant, you mentioned your company uh, is in 12 different states. How does something like this expand and possibly become a national mo state or national model? Sure, so we know there, there are schools in every state in America. Um, there's charter schools in about 39 or 40 um, states across the country. And so, you know, we open source all of our deliverables and our findings. And so we encourage um, schools, community um, organizations to, to take our findings, to build off them and to make them better so we can become better and their organizations can become better as well. Um, and so we have shared our findings from the first phase of this project with a number of constituents across the country um, and certainly happy to continue to talk with those organizations as they think about ways to best support their families. And this hasn't been going on very long, has it? Uh, last year went on for about six month pilot project and this year we're starting again for 12 more months. And so we're coming up on the year long anniversary um, and some of the initial findings we've been able to capture have been really powerful. We look forward to tracking it as time goes on. Greg, thanks so much for your time and your information. Great, thank you so much. Well, Charlotte has certainly attracted musicians from all around the world to come play here, but did you